them. So uh, it's contradictory itself. And you don't have, uh, uh, you don't have Hi and welcome to my channel. I wanted to do a video on basically who I am. How did I get started in fitness? Um, how did I become a vegan? And all those things that may be like a mystery. And actually, what do I do for a living? You know, what have I done in the past 45 years I've been on this earth? <laughs> So to start off, how did I get into fitness? How long I've been working out? I've been working out ever since, shortly after I graduated from high school. Um, I used to live with my mom, and one day my mom came home and her stomach was like really huge. I mean, she just had Chinese food. You know, I had gained weight. I was kicking like maybe 180. So there was this lady at my job at the Voice of America who is in the military. And uh, she had to go to fat class because she had gained too much weight. So anyway, um, long story short, she invited us to go to Weight Watchers. So me and my mother went to Weight Watchers. It was very dedicated. I lost like 40 pounds on Weight Watchers. My mother lost over 100 pounds on Weight Watchers. So it was very successful for us so then shortly after that we started working out started running around our neighborhood and then we actually joined the gym uh, but even in that time span my weight wasn't very steady I would lose weight gain weight lose weight gain weight and so forth throughout up until I got married and uh, when I got married I was ooh, really big and uh, so I was going to uh, Largo Gold's Gym, I mean, not Gold's Gym, but it was Largo World Gym, I believe. And uh, so I'm working out every day, but again, I'm eating whatever I want because at that time people was like, oh, you can eat whatever you want as long as you work out. Well, I wasn't seeing any results. So I came in and one of the trainers there was like, Hey, I'm, you know, he was like, I'm going to keep it real. You're like a gym rat. You come here all the time, but you, I haven't really seen any results. So I'm going to challenge you to do a competition, something, to, you know, um, to give you some goals, uh, something to look forward to. So I said, well, I don't have a trainer. I can't afford a trainer. So I'll never forget, there was a trainer named Dimitri. He said, I'll train you for free but if I feel as if you're eating like at least one cookie deal done so I did and I was very dedicated for that whole year I trained very hard I was on my diet he gave me my diet plan but at that time I was eating meat so then um, I lost over 70 pounds 70 pounds um, my stage weight was like 115 that was my first show but back then, this is like, um, I would say almost 15 years ago, it wasn't a hard muscle look. It was just, it's more like a beach body. So I ended up competing for my first show at the age of 30, and I came third place, which I thought was a huge accomplishment. I was very proud, and but my husband at the time didn't like it. He didn't like that size. He didn't like me in the gym all the time. So I decided, you know, I kind of slacked off a little bit because he didn't like it. So then I started to travel to Africa. I ended up um, starting my own nonprofit organizations for children and families in war-torn countries. And that took a lot of my time. And uh, then I just gained the weight. You're not in the gym. I'm trying to promote my business. So I gained weight back. You know up and down and then shortly after that and then shortly after that I became a vegan so um, and then I gained even more weight as a vegan um, because you know everything you eat is starch and carbs so um, later on after that I met my husband 
I met my next husband because <laughs> I got divorced from that one. And I met my next one, uh, the love of my life, actually. And he uh, was a Jamaican. And, you know, he liked to eat and they liked their women kind of thick. But we still worked out together. We worked out a lot, worked out every day, but we ate our, you know, our dumplings and, you know, our veggies. But he ate chicken and fish, but I didn't. So, but still the, the bananas and the fried plantains and it's rice and peas, you know. So, I'm still thick, you know. To me, I look okay, but, <laughs> but in our reality. So... You know, so in still, he still inspired me. He inspired me to do my best. He inspired me to say, hey, if you want to do something and you want to achieve something, you got to do it every day. You know, because he had lost a lot of weight. He was, a, a, you know, he was chubby, you know, and, but he had lost a lot of weight. By the time I met him, he was way down and he was really starting to sculpt his body. But then tragically, my husband was killed. Um, I mean... He wasn't killed. No one killed him, but he died from a tragic motorcycle accident in Jamaica while we was on our anniversary. So then this this took a, this was a turn for me. It was, you know, who could expect that their husband, after one year of marriage, would die on a motorcycle accident? You know. So then I realized that. During my first competition, it gave me power. It, it, you know, I was insecure. It helped me to find myself. So I figured if it could help me with the with my insecurities I had back then, I'm sure it could help me now as to keeping my mind focused in sort of like a meditation almost. You know what I mean? So it's like. I don't want to be sitting around letting these thoughts and things cloud my mind. Let me do something constructive because he left two little girls behind for me to care for and I got to be strong for them. So I said, hey, I'm going to do a competition. And this is 15 years later, or 14 years. And it's going to keep me focused. It's going to keep me grounded. And I'm going to honor my husband with this particular competition. Because he reminded me, he gave me strength to do what I needed to do. You know, he was my rock and he was my everything. So, And I miss him dearly. And uh, during this whole competition, I just thought about him and how I could honor him. And this was the best way that I knew that I could honor him. And, uh, yeah, so now that show, you know, that show ended. And here I am. How did I become a vegan? I stopped eating meat about 10 years ago when my father, actually my father was diagnosed with colon cancer, but I stopped eating meat really when he was diagnosed with colon cancer, but I've had, my, my whole family is like from the south, so we had, you know, high, I mean, high blood pressure, diabetes, um, kidney failure in my family, and I didn't want for this cycle of unhealthiness to continue with me so I decided when my father was diagnosed with cancer I just stopped eating meat period um, and I haven't looked back and then shortly after that I became a Buddhist and you know that's our number one precept you know do not harm any animals anything that has life anything that has a consciousness or that's conscious of itself. So, and I haven't looked back, but I am able to construct any vegan meal. Like if there's a meat recipe, I can make it vegan. So still, I still enjoy my food, very much so. I love to bake, I love to be creative, and I love to have great tasting food. So, there you have it. and. What do I do for a living? Oh, goodness. I'm a radio producer for The Voice of America. I work night shift. So this is like the sweet shift ever. Um, I work out during the day, and then I work at night, which is very good. Um, I've been doing this for since high school, since 1990. Um, so, yeah, I've been here a while. 
So I'm a director. We broadcast through Africa. Uh, it's current news and events. And I love this job. The people here are great. Uh, later on, you're going to meet maybe some of the engineers and some of the studios. We're going to show you what those look like. And um, so just sit back and enjoy yourself. And um, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. And don't forget to subscribe. All right. Until next time. Peace. Hello once again. I am um, just about to go to the studio and direct a show. And I thought I'll give you a little tour, so to speak. Walking um, this time of night, there's not that many people around. Um, just a handful, but we like it like that. Very nice and quiet. You get free parking. You get extra money working at night. And you just don't have the hassle of, you know, all that traffic. So, I love it. Been doing it for a long time. But it change it for the world. Oh, my mouth looks full. I'm chewing some gum. Trying to not eat that much at night. So, I just chew gum in the process. Um... So yeah, so we're just going through to the studios, and um, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. We got some baby studios, and then we got some real big ones. We do, we actually do TV and radio here. So some of the some of the studios is like um, for both radio and TV, and some are just for t some are just for radio. So. Okay, so, hold on. So we're going into the studio. And here's my favorite buddy, Jimmy. Yes, you're on YouTube, baby. Beautiful, beautiful. Just showing my listeners and viewers where I, what I do and where I work. You can't see. I know. I broke it. So. You broke it? Oh yes, you did. You did. You're healing. It's still in the healing process. Exactly. Good job, Jimmy. Thank you. <laughs> Good job. He's like the best producer. I mean, the best engineer ever. So, Jimmy, today we have a yes. We have a playback, so all right, all right. Next time, you guys, peace. <laughs>